Ladies and berms, it's David Davidson here with the same name twice to give you double the mountain biking pleasure on today's episode. I'm going to talk with you about what the seven different types of mountain bike coaching are, how much you should pay for them, my bike predictions for how this whole entire industry is going to go in 2024 and beyond. And plus, I'm going to dive into a little bit of the pros and cons of each one of them so that you can think about maybe if you're considering bike coaching, which one to go for. So let's get started with the iPad. All right. So seven types of coaching. Uh, first of all, what I'm going to do is actually go through my predictions for 2024. We're going to hit it hard, hit it fast, and we're going to talk about it. So right now in, in the marketplace, we have, uh, you got to look at the market if you're going to look at any type of business. So by the way, the reason you should listen to me and the reason I'm making this video is very simple. You guys asked, so I'm making it. And uh, I was employee number one at one of the fastest growing firms in the entire United States in the coaching industry. We were hired by Tony Robbins, Dean Graziosi, Frank Kern, plenty of other coaching businesses. Uh, I've coached Bigger Pockets. You might have heard of them. Capitalism.com. They've been my personal clients. So before I was a mountain bike coach, I was kind of like a, a coaching. I was in the coaching industry, building curriculums, doing leadership coaching. So, you know, I kind of have a finger on the pulse of this stuff. Definitely not to impress any of you guys because none of you care about this stuff. Big deal. It's just that um, this is helpful to talk about because we're talking about something related to business, which is coaching, because uh, these people are running a business. So in 2024, we got a couple things going on. Number one, the United States, uh, we surpassed, um, again, I'm not going to cite my freaking sources. This is not a financial <laughs> channel. We passed a trillion dollars of credit card debt. And the reason why this matters for mountain bikers like you is because um, what this is doing is it's actually pushing the... Uh, I guess you could call it the upper class and the lower class kind of further away from each other. It's really kind of sad. Like there's less and less of a middle class. I think it personally is going to make mountain biking a little bit potentially less accessible for uh, for certain people. So that matters to coaches. You got to be thinking about, okay, well, who do you serve and how can we maybe create, how can we create something where there's more free information for people that were like me when I was in college or fresh out of college for, <laughs> for five years where I had you know, not the best paying job and I was struggling and I had one surly, rigid bike that had a single speed and I was bumping along on that. How can we help these people? Because guess what? They're going to get money later on when they're, when they're older. So we've got this big force in the marketplace right now. And what we need to do is be thinking about, okay, cool, well, how can we help everybody still? So we got a trillion dollars in credit card debt in the United States of America. We also have this massive number, 40 million mountain bikers. Uh, you can look this up. Just go Google it. There's 40 million participants every year in mountain biking. I actually don't think that that's an inflated number from uh, from the, the pandemic. I think that that's actually just there's legitimately that many people that participate in the sport. And even if that is a little bit inflated, gosh, 30 million of them probably are, are really more diehard than not. <clears throat> And there's also, I don't, I really don't know. I tried to look, but I'm not going to go too deep into this. I know that there's at least probably about 10,000 certified coaches in, um, from the, maybe the PMBI, the BICP. I believe that the BICP, please don't quote me on this. I believe they've certified over 3000 instructors. And I think that there's at least, if not more than that with the PMBI. So we have 10,000 coaches to 40 million mountain bikers. That's a pretty rough ratio because those coaches are spread out across the entire world. <laughs> So uh, not very many coaches, actually. And uh, we've also got in the bike industry, there's a lot of layoffs. There's a lot of go bike companies going out of business, a lot of bikes going for sale. So a lot of people talk about the bike industry declining. My biggest prediction is actually biking is going to grow. Biking is going to grow because people are starting to get, they're getting tired of being inside. They're tired of saying, you know what? I'm going to put off my dreams until later. I actually think that mountain bikers are just people like everybody else, you and me. And they're like, you know what? I've had a lot of inflation. I've had a lot of bad things happen. And you know what? I'm going to invite the things that I care about into my life and, you know, maybe be a little bit more fiscally responsible if that's important to you. That's my prediction. I think that things are looking up. Things are getting brighter. Uh, people are people are taking more control of their life in a lot of ways. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there struggling. And, and you know, I've been there before myself uh, before I got married. In the first few years I was married, it's tough. And, and I just think that because of these forces – coaching. There's going to be a lot more people wanting to get certified. I noticed this in one of my programs that I worked with riders on. They would come to me and they'd work on their riding. And actually I did a poll. It ended up that 40% of the riders in this program, now mind you, this was a little bit more of a 
And this is a program that was pretty high level. Like these are people that are extremely dedicated to the sport. They paid a lot of money to be there. 40% of them went on to be a certified instructor. 40. That is very high. Uh, I think that there's a huge desire for people to pass it on. The thing I've actually talked to thousands of mountain bikers about this and uh, actually probably more hundred high hundreds, almost a thousand. And the thing that I hear a lot, most common are I want to be a PMBI, I want to get my BICP or IMBA, or they want to get their, um, what's the high school, NICA. And they want to get certified in this to, to give back. A lot of it is, you know, I've got kids or there's kids that are nieces and nephews of mine and they want to be a NICA instructor so that this rider can, you know, help, so that they can be educated when the kids are like better than them and they can actually, you know, flip that around and be like, oh, okay, cool, here, here you go, kids. So there's a big pressure of coaching more of this. More people want to be coaches. I think because of this, people are also demanding quality because prices are going up in the marketplace and people are investing for the long term. And so people demand good quality out of their mountain bike instructor, okay? So the quality has got to go up. This is a natural force. I mean, I, I personally love a lot of things about capitalism, because the market determines what, what happens. If something is bad, nine times out of 10, that thing gets squeezed out of the marketplace by natural forces. Hey, we don't want that, so we're not gonna pay for it. So boom, that thing gets squeezed out. And the cool thing about this is that cream always rises to the top. You know, the cream of the crop, the dust on top of outstanding, those, that's a, a phrase that I borrow from um, my old coach, Trevor. I don't know if you're listening. And, uh, you know, the, the thing is the quality always rises to the top. And what you're going to find if you're watching this industry is that you're going to notice that a lot of the best coaches, they're just going to stand out. And there's going to be this, uh, this kind of, you know, this, I don't want to, it's not elite. It's like these really skilled coaches. Some of them are going to be very down to earth. Their personalities are going to be very approachable. Some of them are going to be like, I already think that, uh, you know, people like Aaron Gwynn who are sharing advice online, um, you know, obviously he's, he's definitely got a very professional demeanor. So we have very professional demeanor people. We have very approachable demeanor people. We're going to have a lot of, of this really good quality coaching that's just going to come up out of nowhere. And it's going to be really, really fun. It's going to be a super exciting 2024 and, and beyond because with more coaches getting the game, the competition getting better, we're naturally going to go, okay, this guy's doing a really good job. Let's, let's, you know, take some cues from that. And I think it's a really good thing. I actually want to see more and more coaches and I want to see more, more competition. I want to see other people do what we're doing here. And I think those standards are going to go up. That's what that says. That, that says standards. I should have been a doctor. <laughs> I couldn't read my writing for anything. Anyway, so the, the standards are going up for instruction. And this is something that I talk about with, uh, with, I'm friends with Shams March. Um, you know, I'm friends with, um, with some other instructors who are like the level three, level four PMBI guys, and they're the ones certifying the instructors. And this is something that they talk about. They're, what's awesome about instructor certification programs, the thing that I love about these really high quality programs is that they're, they're always looking to push and they're very slow and steady people. And that's actually a huge compliment. So a slow and steady person who looks to improve, the thing about this is that Shams has been coaching for 30 plus years. And we also have um, Josh, he's up in North Carolina. He's an instructor certifier and, and he's, I think he's been coaching and guiding and, and he literally lives this stuff. I don't know how many years he's been doing it. It's gotta be at least 20. Don't quote me on that, Josh, if you're watching. Big shout out to you. <clears throat> and, and I've you know worked with both of these guys kind of personally on some stuff. And when you're someone who just gets a little better every day for decades, the standard is just insane. So my prediction is because the coaching quality is going up and the coaching competition is going up from the regular folks, you know, I would put myself in that category, uh, even though I kind of you know fake brag on here sometimes at the beginning of my videos, I just am what I am. The quality is going up because there's a higher standard. The standard is just going up because the people who are at the forefront of building the curriculums are consistently and constantly getting better. All right, my last, my last prediction is that taxes are going up. We all know that. It's a joke, by the way. It's like, taxes going to go up, y'all. The rent is too damn high. Here it is. So here's my predictions. Because of all this, what this is doing is this, this is expanding the marketplace, okay? So the marketplace 
the marketplace has this this desire okay so this is the desire of the marketplace of the 40 million participants in mountain biking and what's happening is when the standard goes up that builds a new a new kind of thing here when the when the uh, when the quality goes up boom that builds an increased demand in the marketplace because the thing is that people want this outcome mountain bikers want to improve so my prediction for 2024 and beyond is I think we're going to very, very quickly be seeing a lot more people taking coaching. We're going to see a lot more coaches be very skilled at their craft. And I just think overall, it's going to be a very, very good year for coaching in general, um, especially for those coaches who are good at selling themselves and their services. Now, the things that I think because of this, this increase in all of this opportunity right here is I do think that there are going to be some changes to like, like right now. If you wanted to get a coach, you're going to have to go talk to a bike park or go and Google someone locally. You're not going to find someone. There is no database right now. I think that uh, either I'm, I'm going to be building one of these with some people or I think that someone's going to build a database where it's easy to get a one-to-one -one coach locally. I think this is something that's just like, why don't we have this? I mean, someone could have come up with this 10 years ago and didn't. So maybe there is. If there is a database, someone please comment below. Please correct me. I'm here to learn. And I also think that the local and the digital are merging. I've seen some coaching programs that, that I follow. They're trying to help people get offline so we can go back to the woods. I think we have plenty of that. I do think that that's a good micro initiative. I think in the macro, though, that people are looking to solve a problem. People are stuck on the intermediate plateau. If you're watching this channel, that's kind of who this is for. It's like you've been riding a little while maybe and you're stuck on the intermediate plateau. I know I got some beginners on here too. You're more than welcome. You'll get there quickly. But look, an intermediate rider who's been riding five or 10 years, there's a ton of you. 80% of you, 70% of you are 35 to 55 year old. You're probably like an engineer. You've got a, a desk job. You're very tech savvy. You're very... You know, we're nerds. We all love our, our facts about bikes, all that stuff. It's great. The problem we have, though, is that it's very hard to solve a problem using YouTube. I, I'm trying to do a good job here, but ultimately, like, I'm going to help a few people with YouTube, and a lot of us just need a little bit more, and that's why I think that digital and local is going to merge, okay? This is a huge force, and I think it's going to happen. I think that there's going to be more buyers investing, and I think this is going to be from the consumer side, and also from the, uh, what would you call that? The people that own bike company side, so the business. So consumer side and business side, there's going to be more investing. And I, look, I don't think it's going to be AI and crypto necessarily. I think those are very fringe things. The main thing is that there's 40 million mountain bikers right now that participate in the United States alone. And mountain biking is harder than we are good at it. So ultimately, the consumer pressure right here, boom, we've got the business pressure opportunity. The business people are good business people. They're going to come in and they're going to look at this and go, okay, well, who's merging local and digital? Who's built a database? Who's solving problems for these people? That's where obviously, you know, I'm not going to plug myself here. That's, that's how we're thinking over here, Mountain Bike Academy, blah, blah, blah. Now, again, I'm, this purpose is not here for this. <clears throat> for me to talk about me, let's talk about the seven types of coaching now. And I'm going to go through these pretty quick. And I think I'm going to give you kind of what you should pay for this. Here's the framework of how I think about this. If you see a coach that's outside of the range that I talk about, please don't go and be like, oh, they're too expensive. Oh, they're too cheap. Based on this one YouTube video, this is very general. So that for those of you who haven't bought anything like this before, you kind of know what you're getting yourself into. So here we have a diagram of the three different types of things you can buy with coaching. Okay, and I have a ton of experience in this where, uh, again, this, this was my background. So we have right here, we have information, we have transformation. Sorry, that's a little hard to read. And we also have <clears throat> experience. Info is where it's like, here is a downloadable workout. Here's a PDF. Here's a quick video. Transformation, that's where someone diagnoses the problem or spots the issue that you're having and gives you what you need to fix it and works with you over a course of a period of time to help you achieve a goal. A really good transformation is where someone maps out the entire journey and says, here's your start, here's your finish, here's where you are now. 
Here's how we're going to solve your problem. The experience, it's just, I mean, that's like, we're going to Retallic Lodge. We're going to Whistler. We're partying with Brett Tippy. We are shredding the local trails with the local pro. That's just, it. it's like, you know, disney fi it or what. I don't know. You know what I mean? You get experience. Now, what I've done is, look, if you're just getting an experience, you get $1. It's a little bit valuable, d depending on who you're with. If you're looking for a transformation alone, then what you're looking at is, you know, it's relative, it can be relatively inexpensive. It's like, you know, maybe someone just, um, actually there's a range here, it depends on this. Uh, usually a transformation includes the other two. And so by default, it ends up being a higher value. But just a transformation alone, like if someone gives you a tip at the trail, that could be free or inexpensive, all right? Or maybe you go get a one-to-one -one coaching experience and they give you a little bit of a transformation, you know, one hour, one tip, helps you corner better. Cool. Put a dollar sign next to it. Information, one dollar sign. If you get any of these by themselves, one dollar sign. That's kind of like on, you guys know on Google where you're, you're like, okay, what's this restaurant? Is it one dollar, two dollar, three dollar? Same idea here. Now, if you combine the two, if you combine experience and transformation, cool. Well, then you're going to end up getting a little bit more value. Combine the, do the dollars here, combine the value, boom. And then finally, if you combine all three information experience or community maybe and then transformation that's that's the banger that's where i believe that the the market is actually again it's pushing towards two things either one of the three or it's pushing towards a combination of transformation information and experience now the coaches who can pull this off the best are going to be aligning with the best model so pay attention to that some of these seven things are different models now all right Let's go through this really quickly and, and knock it out and nail it. Here we go. First one is in-person lessons and one-to-one. -one. I'm just going to give a price range and a general idea of what I think. In-person lessons with a certified instructor, you're looking at anywhere between 50 bucks an hour. Again, I'm ballparking. Someone might be 20 bucks an hour and they're just starting out. That's cool. But a good one's going to be 50 to approximately up to 200 an hour, and that's one-to-one. -one. Usually in-person lessons, what they like to do is bundle two to three hours together. I find a nice sweet spot is right around 75 bucks an hour. Do you think that's expensive? Do you think that's inexpensive? Personally, I think if someone's spending hours of their day to share kind of a curriculum with you and you know scope out the spot beforehand and have a plan, Man, we're touching on a little bit of transformation and information. You get two dollar signs for that. That's that's I mean, seventy five bucks an hour ain't too bad. Uh, my first lesson I took from a World Cup pro named Caroline Washam. She's a local pro. I think hers was uh, in this range, and so I, I felt like I got frankly a whole lot more than I paid for because of the specificity of the information and because of just her experience, you know? And so if you get a good coach, I'd be paying up to 200 to $500 for a half day, easily. That's one-to-one. -one. In-person clinics in a group setting, I think a good sweet spot for this one is right around, you know, 150 bucks to 250 for a half day and up to $400 for a full day. And that's for in-person clinics in a group setting. Why is this? Because there's a little bit less personal attention. Frankly, though, I found the people that love these, that find it super worth it, they kind of sign up for the experience. Where I, I really, like the pros and cons of what others have told me about in-person clinics, and I'm not going to name any names here. It's just If you go to a clinic and it's a company or you go to a group clinic, I've found that I hear this problem less. One of the cons can be, I don't get enough personalized attention. You usually don't hear that in a group of three to six or less. One of the pros of that though, is you can actually learn and it feels really comfortable to be in a small group. I really like small groups. They can be really cool. And you can actually get a little bit less of a price. So what's kind of cool is one of the pros of it is you can bring a couple of buddies, you get a, a, your own coach for you and your buddies for half a day and it's like, you know, 75 bucks or a hundred bucks for the whole thing for each of you, which can be really cool. Now, again, the downside is, you know, the bigger the group, sometimes the less personalized attention. And uh, what's kind of challenging about a group is that everybody has to go on a run. And so it can be a lot slower to make quick progress. 
This is where it's a little bit iffy if you're an intermediate rider and you're trying to get to expert level. Sometimes those in-person one-to-one lessons may be a better fit for you. All right, so let's move on to number three. The third type of, of coaching is we've got online communities and info products. So this is like a one-off PDF or uh, like a you know $19 a month coaching program. There's a lot out there for like 19 to $25. I think there's a lot more... Honestly, I think there's actually a lot more of these people in Europe doing this stuff because mountain biking is huge in Europe. And uh, honestly, my I don't really have an opinion on what these should cost. It's like, what's it worth to you? Because that ain't a lot of money. That's like Disney Plus, man. I mean, mountain biking, Disney Plus. That's it. Pay whatever you think that's worth. I don't really have a strong opinion on that. I think that online communities... They need to, so so here's my thought about online communities. More money needs more personalization. Less money, less personalization. If you find that you're in one of these communities and the information you're getting is go back through the video that's in the course, then that is hyper not personalized. If they're just encouraging you, I personally don't think that that is very personalized. If they're just there to spur you on, I personally don't like, I, again, I went to engineering school. I have a whole bunch, it's, in my family, you're an entrepreneur or a surgeon, or I think there's one that's not, maybe an accountant. <laughs> so like precision matters to me. And um, yeah, so so I really value specific hyper fast feedback. I'm really big on that. So that's for you to decide. If you're in one of those communities, another thing, here's the thing too. If you're in one of these communities, you can raise the value of what you get out of this by asking better questions. So if you're good at asking questions, get in there and ask better questions. Get some value out of there. I like that stuff. If you're terrible at asking questions, hire a one-to-one coach in person. You can get a one-to-one with a pro. I have seen up to $800 a day or more for certain professional riders. And look, I'll be straight up with you. <clears throat> that can be really worth it. That's also a hell of a lot of money. And the potential downside is that you might be, uh, you, you might not quite be able to extract all the value out of that in a single day. The reason that I do like this, the pro of riding with a professional for a day or a half day, is the confidence it can give you to have someone who's coached an Olympic athlete look at you and go, yeah, you're doing it just fine. Here's why. Here's a video. Yeah, good job. That can be pretty cool. That can give you a ton of confidence. So uh, one thing I remember back in college when I was at Clemson Freeride, we we built the downhill course. We were hosting the Red Bull night shift. And during practice one time, I just remember one of the pros who was like a local pro at that time, Chris Herndon, was riding with us. And... I, I did like, we had, I think it was like a 27 or a 32 foot tabletop. And I came by and got the whip sideways. And I was like inches off the ground the whole time. Cause it was just, rah. and I remember one of my buddies was like, dude, he said, whoa, when you rode. And I like, I was floored. I was just like, all right, I made it great. I can retire. I was like 20. <laughs> and I was just so, I was like, so humbled that, that a, someone who had placed like third in the national and downhill or second in the national and downhill and had won slalom and was like sponsored by specialized at the time looked at me and said wow i mean like does that really matter i'm 37 i have kids now it's like no it doesn't matter but looking back it's just so cool to be able to say you know they saw me and recognized me and if you're if you've got the money to spend i mean that alone can just be a really cool boost to your confidence the down again, like I said, the downside's kind of like it, it's not. I mean, that's a bigger amount of money, and if you don't get that value, you're more exposed, more risk. Let's go over to destination. You get a big experience for this, honestly. Like, if you go to Retalic Lodge or you go to do one of those really cool guided rides, automatically, I think the value is embedded in this because you're going with someone. If you value going with someone who's been to the trail before, knows the way, and that's what you're in for, dude, that's worth like three to five grand, ten grand, easy just done pay for it so um, destination up to like 10k plus all about it the cool thing about this is that you can actually do like local destinations and you can combine hey i'm going to be in town 
who's a local, like, I don't know, like Rich Drew. Guy's got great forearms. But, bro, I hope you hear this one day and, like, we can compare forearms one day because I have really tiny forearms. And I would love to just get a selfie with you and we could just, you know, I could just bask in your aura of forearm strength. <laughs> Anyways, man. But, like, I mean, if it were me and I were trying to do maybe an inexpensive destination, I'd hire Rich Drew for half a day. Like, hey, man, can you go ride with me and kind of show me around your local trails? That's like kind of a cool way to do it. Obviously, if you want to go a little bit more expensive, there's some Whistler stuff. I'm sure that there's some cool experiences. But that's that's one of those things where it's like, hey, if you got the money to burn, it's it's like 99% chance going to be worth it. On to number six. Number six is, it's actually pretty rare. I wish that there were more coaches in this space. This is where I'm currently at with most of what we do. Now, right now, we do have a waiting list. If you're absolutely like, I have to get on the waiting list and you're like watching my channel, you're like, Dave, is, he's my coach. I need to work with Dave. Cool. Go below. I'll put in the description uh, my email address, my my company email address for the Mountain Bike Academy. This is our coaching. We, we have a coaching program. And if you're looking to get coaching, right now you can't get in. But I will put you on the waiting list if you email the email below and just put in the subject line waiting list. And if you want bonus points, put in like what you're working on or what you're hoping to achieve. I'll read it personally and I'll make sure that you get help. Um, we probably are looking to open uh, any anything we're doing in possibly mid-February. Uh, we've been working on the products. Transformation though. Here's the deal. Uh, the honest truth is that not everybody should buy transformations. Not everybody. And not every model can serve every type of mountain biker. So transformations, they're not for everybody. So this is not a 40 million mountain biker type of model. This is more like a couple thousand at the most per year. And so, so here's the thing. There are, there are different classes of informations that are designed to help different uh, parts of the of the market, small transformations or low personalization, but some personalization transformations. These are worth up to I would say a thousand per year, and on the high end, we're talking up to five thousand dollars one time. Okay, how do I know this? I've personally worked with over. 25 businesses doing $10 million in revenue, charging $5,000 or more. Most of those had way less than 40 million people in their market. So the reason why I say this, it has less to do with money and it's more to do about who are the people, who are the mountain bikers that <clears throat> they've already invested 30, 50, $100,000 into their riding. They've already invested they're going to invest tens of thousands of dollars or the equivalent time and energy and passion into the sport this year in 2024. And coaches, listen up. I mean, the fact of the matter is that there is a small sliver of the market. I don't know what percentage it is. Maybe it's 1%, maybe it's 5% who has the money, who is really, really passionate about getting better at riding. This is where we focus on helping people break the intermediate plateau. It's usually around this range right here. And the reason why is because, again, it's it requires that we do a deep dive into what the problem is, why the problem is a problem. And based on what the goal is, we map out the entire pathway and give someone only the necessary things they need to achieve this in very limited time without the things that they hate, like moving to Whistler to practice 24-7, without giving up on being a good dad or a good mom or a good friend, and without having to spend more money on bike parts. So this is like hyper niche stuff. And, and the key here is you have to work with someone who's a hyper specialist in your niche. And you do not hire someone. For, for, I mean, don't even hire me. If you're like, oh, well, what's my guarantee? Uh, you know, how can I make sure I get results? I got to talk to my, my cousin's cat shrink before I sign up with you. You know, this is not for you. Like you need to go do pretty much anything else. The people who are like, I will stop at nothing to be pretty darn good at mountain biking because I care about it. I love it. And I've got the money to spend to invest in this. It's again, that's why this is such a hyper niche thing. 
Now, the crazy thing about this, the reason why transformation products are so important here is because if, if, if a coach or an instructor is helping you using a transformation, what this does is it bleeds over into every other area of the marketplace. The techniques, the tactics, the coaching, the, the kind of insights you can get from coaching someone doing this. Like if you guys watch the channel and you're like, wow, never heard that before. Guess what? It's because someone told me something I had never heard before as a coach. And I was like, hmm, okay, so here's the principle. We need to try this. And this, and this person, I've kind of gotten to know them pretty well. And I've worked with them for a couple weeks, a couple months. And I bet if I say it this way, they're going to be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's where you get all this stuff. And the thing is, it really does, um, like, for all, of, for all of my, like, super liberal friends watching this, like, I'm, I'm going to make something. You hate this. You're going to hate this. It's like trickle-down coachonomics. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's really bad. But, um, but it's really true. It's like... You know, when I go and do YouTube, it allows me to be a better YouTuber. It allows me to be a better coach if I do an in-person lesson. And the lessons you learn by working at a deep, deep, deep level with people, these are, again, these are regular people. I don't work with professional athletes. I don't coach, uh, like, I don't coach Loic Bruni. <laughs> For the reason being, it's like he just needs to have the principles repeated and he needs to work on his athleticism. That's what he does. He's already got people to do that. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking what Loic Bruni might need and applying it to someone like you, who's a hyper enthusiast, who's already spent good money on their bike, who isn't getting any better. You're stuck at the intermediate plateau. So these transformations is a thousand a year on the subscription side ish, depending on stuff up to that. And then up to say 5,000, five years ago, I actually would have said maybe up to $10,000 is what you should pay for something like this. And frankly, I just think the market's gotten better and there's more and more solutions out there. And so I'd cut that in half. Cool. So here's the seventh type that doesn't exist yet. So I went over all my predictions earlier. We're talking about coaching up, quality up, standards up. Our taxes are getting more expensive. You know, we've got the, the middle class is disappearing. Here's the thing though, the market, the market still demands better. And I think that's what this is. Hybrid transformation programs where We've got the databases, the local and digital, and the buyers investing more. All of these three things are going to go into here. So what does this look like? I'm actually building this right now. It's, it's where you've got the transformation, you've got the experience, and you've got a local riding community that they're able to access the transformation quickly because it's digital. And then we've got the community, the experience, the information, all local. You know, that's what we're building. So Mountain Bike Academy, there's my, there's my business plan, guys. Uh, we are not taking investors. However, if you are looking to buy the company, um, that's where we're going. So anyways, this isn't about us. It's about, you know, look, if you're out there looking to buy, I would say that probably, I don't know, 90% of you are going to enjoy one of the first three here the most. And the same people that like the one-on-one with the pros, the destination stuff, those guys are gonna be buying the, the transformation programs. And, and hey, there's some of you that maybe aren't looking to spend a ton of money. I've, I've got plenty of people that are like, yeah, my bike's worth a grand. And they've gone and they've paid us three, four, five thousand dollars for coaching. I mean, that happens too. It, it's, it doesn't really matter. So the, the point of the matter is that, hey, look, the market, it's an awesome time to be a mountain biker. It's an awesome time to be a mountain bike coach. Most importantly though, Again, coaches out there, if you're listening to this, raise, let's raise our game, let's get better, let's keep working at it, let's keep coaching, having fun. There's so many people. Gosh, there's so many people. There's 40 million mountain bikers. And I would just encourage you to think about, okay, how can you raise your skills and raise your prices? Because the market's going to demand better coaches and they're going to be willing to pay you if you, if you know, look, maybe you were charging 50 bucks an hour before and you wanna charge 75, great. Get out there, set a goal for yourself. Go coach some more. Get some more certifications. Um, follow my channel. I may possibly have some things later on where I'm, I'm trying to work some things out with um, some people who uh, already have certifications where I'm going to try to be helping promoting them to you and creating better opportunities for you guys there. So follow the channel. And uh, yeah, so get after it. If you're, a, if you're someone who's looking for coaching, go below. Um, type in, type in waitlist. If you want to be on the wait list for our next opening right now, again, we, we only do this every once in a while where we open things up and I'm not going to charge you five grand. 
on this uh, that program you're not eligible for it you have to actually go through our inexpensive kind of chill thing to even be eligible for the more expensive stuff so don't worry we're not going to get on the phone and try to convince you to drop three four five grand um, we're still serving some people right now that are oh that's fun I don't know how I did that. Anyways, we're still serving some people that are currently in those programs, but they're not open right now. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I don't know what just happened with my iPad, so we're going to wrap it up there. Love you guys. Peace.